Welcome, everybody, uh, to maximizing your data cloud credits, uh, how to forecast, manage, and optimize your uh, data cloud. Um, Forward-looking statements, please remember that Salesforce is a publicly traded company and to make all of your buying decisions based on currently available technology. We will not be making any forward-looking statements, so you're relatively safe. You're in a safe space. Um, how many of you are properly caffeinated by this time of the day for a session? Okay, just want to make sure. Okay, so you've had your coffee. Good. Um, thank you again for taking time and choosing uh, you know, the next 20 or so minutes to spend with us as we go through this. My name is Chris Zullo. I'm the Global Practice Director uh, for Customer 360 and Marketing with uh, AllCloud. And I'm joined by... I'm Yeva Roberts, VP of Strategic Alliances for AllCloud North America. Thank you from both of us for joining and choosing to spend your time today thinking about nothing other than data cloud consumption credits. Really exciting topic, so that's why we want to make sure you're caffeinated. So with that, how many of you are new to consumption-based pricing? Raise your hand. Okay. How many of you have budget planning for 2025 top of mind right now? Okay, awesome. You are here for the right reasons. All right, so some of the uh, common questions that we get uh, when we talk to our clients that are new to consumption-based pricing is what they're being asked for about uh, you know, planning purposes from their leaders. So one of the questions they get asked a lot is what might usage look like next year, right? And if you're an existing data cloud user, you're probably likely to get asked the second question. Okay, what is it going to look like when I need to scale my use cases, right? And then how um, can I maximize that usage, right? Which is the focus of the session. And then Chris, the last question is for you. How much, if any, of the credits roll over? Yeah. They don't. Okay. We'll come back to that. All right. So one of the um, best ways to predict your consumption-based um, usage is really having a good handle on your use cases and really doing a good job with work if you're an admin working with the business side uh, and figuring out what is the potential value of those use cases. So I'm going to walk you through that really quick. So there are four keys or four key questions that you want to ask, especially if you're in an admin role and you're working closely with the business that's coming to you, right? The first question is going to be, is there, from you to them, is there an actual use case for the data you want me to add to Data Cloud? If there's not a use case, you definitely don't want to add this data source into Data Cloud because you're just wasting your consumption credits. The next question you're probably going to be asked, and you, I would encourage you to ask yourself, do you clearly understand the use case that the, maybe the business is bringing to you? So for example, if you're a retailer and the business is coming to you, the marketing team is coming to you and they're saying, hey, I really want to do a hyper-personalized offer to my customers. Can you add these data sources to make that happen? Well, the answer might be yes, but let's really understand the value of that use case. Same goes for sales or for customer service, the contact center, they might come to you and say, really, I want to do a better job enabling my reps, right? Um, and then, I can't, again, it leads to, um, does the business have an actual plan, right? Nothing's worse than having data in any system that just gets unused. And in this case, in the session that we're talking about today, nothing's worse than having your consumption credits getting wasted. Am I right? All right, all right, all right. We got Matthew McConaughey up here. <laughs> and then lastly, what wouldn't, it be, uh, wouldn't it be awesome to have Data Cloud pay for itself, right, incrementally? And so think about it. It's really about uh, understanding those use cases and then figuring out what is the ROI tied to those use cases. Are these use cases more um, service-based focused? So is there a cost savings component? So that's all about profitability or on... Um, the other side of it, it could be about increasing revenue. So think about all the sales and marketing use cases, right? So again, it goes back to the understanding the proportional, proportional value or the benefit that that use case is going to drive to the business and can it pay for itself incrementally. So with that, I'm going to have Chris walk us through how that happens. And with that, how many of you have ever received a gift card in your lifetime? Raise your hands. Yeah, all right. 
now that we got that covered, you can go, the session is over, you understand consumption pr pricing now. Basically, uh, what it is is you, you buy your credits up front and you wind them down. So thinking about it from, from the coffee perspective, you, um, if you're looking at the menu in a coffee shop, you have different menu items, they have different prices, they have different quantities. That's your usage types, your units, uh, and your multipliers. Those combined will help you calculate how much you are consuming. And once you know how much a particular process would consume, then you can start to look at, okay, how often am I gonna run this? How, how um, is it gonna be hourly, daily, and so on? You kind of look at that over time and you can start to get a sense of how many credits will I consume over time? And so for the purposes of simplicity, any calculations that we talk about here are basically gonna be on an annual basis to give you just a, a common denominator. And so getting familiar with the different items on that menu and how they relate will help you calculate how much you are going to use, how much you will use in a particular process, and then extrapolate it from there. And so you think about from like a batch versus streaming, if you are a, I need just one cup of coffee a day and I'm good to go, great. Your coffee is gonna last you longer. Your, your, your gift card balance on the coffee shop uh, you know, is going to last longer. But if you are using it more frequently because you need to refill that caffeine uh, in your veins on a more uh, frequent basis, then you're streaming. It's just, you're happening more real time. You need that refilling faster, more frequently. That's fine, but make sure, as you have said, looking at your use cases. Does your use case justify real time? Because real time will consume at a faster rate than doing it batch. So when in doubt, go batch or at least start batch and then figure out whether or not you need to do it more frequently and go from there. And then once you're done, throw your coffee cup out, you're done. You're not gonna reuse that anymore unless you're at home and you just wash it and go again. But for the purposes of this, once those projects or processes are done, if it's a one and done, don't leave it on so they can just drain your balance um, you know, unchecked. Retire those, deactivate those, get those off the book so they're not taking up credits that you need to consume elsewhere. Um, as I mentioned, batch versus streaming, process less often. If you don't have a strong justification for near real time, don't do it just to have it. I want it at my, wanting it real time versus needing it real time are not the same thing. So, um, and when you're just getting started, test with limited quantities, especially if you're just implementing for the first time or you're going to bring on a new uh, data uh, ingestion or a new segment that you wanna create, start simple and narrow your vector to consume as few credits as possible. Once they are consumed, they are gone, right? And so they don't come back. So from there, monitor frequently, which I would recommend doing early and often, which brings us to this visualization, which is an example of how those weights calculate together. And so um, if you can't necessarily read all these things here, the very top one there, batch profile unification, one of the most important processes you're going to use in data cloud, justifiably so, is going to be the higher weight in your consumption plan. So this is gonna consume faster. Clearly, I don't wanna run that all the time uh, unless, it, unless you really have that much you know, velocity going, you have a lot of that data coming in. Versus a calculated insight, which is very valuable because it helps you identify particular trends or segments or groups of individuals within your, your data, uh, but it doesn't need as much processing power. So I can use that more frequently. It can be a little bit more, um, just more active with it because it's not gonna burn at the same rate. Even though they're both important items, they just have a different weight uh, that, that's associated to them. And so that's just kind of a big picture to kind of round out the, you know, the weight component, you know, the multiplier, the unit, um, and the uh, usage types. Which brings me to, if you take nothing else away, this is the slide that you should take away. 
Uh, and just in, in a transparent note, and uh, we created a calculator in a spreadsheet that is accessible for you that you can take after the after the session and try it out yourself. It's very simple, so please, there it is for free, so money back guaranteed. But please use that at your at your, at your discretion to get a better understanding of how these calculations are made, and so. Um, using the two items on the menu that I mentioned, batch profile unification and calculated insights. We're going to do an apples to apples comparison, at least in the sense of talking about five million uh, pro you know, data rows processed in the same single process. One process, five million records, multiplier of 2,000 is substantially higher than a multiplier of 15. And so when you go through the calculation, and this is publicly available, you can use it, you can find it in Trailhead and, and help site, you can go in and, and do the hard math yourself or you can try the calculator uh, yourself and kind of get a sense of how that works. We get down to, on an annual estimate, almost four million credits consumed by batch profile, assuming we run it once a day, every day for the entire year. On the right, we got the calculated insights, if we only did it once a day, it's a substantially lower charge or amount of credits that are consumed. And so you can see how two important items have very different weights. Now, again, this is batch only. If I had streaming, that number would actually be a lot higher, especially on the, the, um, the profile unification. It's a higher charge because you, it takes more power, you're asking for it more frequently, it's going to be a higher rate of consumption. So it's where we want to stress the use it as needed, but don't unnecessarily just let it run. You're just going to burn through your credits. The ideal usage is to project how much you're going to use or need on an annual basis and work back from there. Um, you don't want to burn too hot. You don't want to burn too low. You want to try and do the Goldilocks approach and kind of you know, nail it in, you know, in the exact number. Um, personal opinion, I would may, if you're unsure, I would go a little under. You can always top up your credit card, I mean your credit balance. <laughs> Sorry, not credit cards. Uh, you might use that, but uh, you can top up. If you need more credits, you can top up as opposed to having more and not being able to use them or just making stuff up to burn those credits. So try and keep it simple. Again, strongly recommend you try out the, the calculator and, and, and there are some you know, things that we tried to do. It is available for use. Do make a copy. We will make some uh, enhancements as we see opportunities to make it uh, you know, more effective, but it has the multipliers built in. It has links out to the usage card or the rate card, I should say, and some additional links that are embedded within that so you can understand how we got to the numbers that we got to. And there's also a piece from taking into consideration growth. Uh, what's your rate of growth? You know, from a percentage base, like am I, am I, I factored in, okay, if I have a 7.3% growth rate over the course of the year, my starting value is not gonna be the same as the ending value. So how do I, how do I calculate that for the, for the entire year? So there is a little bit of a formula built into that. So you can see the one-time use and then in totality over the course of a year. And so what we would like to really do is make your data work for you more effectively so that you can enjoy a nice drink on the beach while the data works hard for you, right? And uh, with that, we have a number of things here that Yeva is going to take you through. Yeah, so uh, Chris mentioned the calculator that's in the middle. Definitely scan that code. Um, we didn't mention it, but it, I think you've heard about it all week, is the digital wallet. That's definitely um, something you want to get familiar with. Uh, and then finally, all the content that we shared, um, for the most part, is available through Trailhead. So if you've not actually gone through all the Trailheads, um, it's definitely a good resource, so I encourage you to do that. Um, we do have a mic in the room, so assuming the mic is hot, if you have questions, please make your way to the mic in the aisle. We're happy to take your questions now. If not, happy to have a, a side chat after the session. 
um, you know, outside the room if you like. Don't all rush. We don't want anybody tripping over each other. I thought you were caffeinated. Yeah. Next time we should offer coffee cards. All right. We'll do that. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you. Uh, If you don't mind and want to get into a selfie with us, um, I will turn around and take a picture with you guys. You want to be in it? Yeah, just go ahead and do it before they run out. (laughs) Oh, you're... Oh, you want me? The the tall guy's going to do it. Oh. Say cheese. Hey. All right. We got a response. Thank you.